Let's get one thing clear. OKRs mean nothing, absolutely nothing, if they aren't transforming these objectives into action. We're gonna talk about that now. So stop me if this sounds familiar. You've got OKRs. Someone's told you to put them in place. And you think, great, this is gonna help us be aligned as we try to solve some problems. But then you put them out there and they land with a big fat thud. No one uses them. It's not affecting any decisions. You find yourself in the middle of what I call hurry up and wait OKRs. I call them hurry up and wait OKRs because these are the OKRs that lead teams to hurry up and get them set up. And then they tend to wait to do them. There's a mad dash in the last two weeks where everybody has to drop everything and try to finish these objectives. Hurry up and wait OKRs happen for three reasons. One, the team is not empowered. OKRs are not used for command and control. It's the biggest mistake I see teams make. You'll often see teams that are trying to use it as command and control when they have things like nested OKRs. We got company, team, primary, self. These are all generally ways for people to try to create some sort of command and control structure. What ends up happening is you're overloading your team with a ton of information. And that ton of information, since you've overloaded the teams with things to do, they end up not focusing on what's important. In fact, don't just take it from me. Christina Watke had a wonderful piece on this on Melissa Perry's podcast. Here's a clip. So. We'll take a moment and go, ugh. So what I've seen over and over again, to the point I go, just don't do individual OKRs. Just don't. If someday you go, oh, I still get OKRs and it makes sense for blah, blah, blah reason, but like wait five years, maybe 10, maybe never, because it's just so complicated. First of all, you're getting way too many things. So with human memory, we've heard the seven plus or minus one, but it turns out that as we've been studying Working memory, it holds about four things, maybe, on a good day. And so when you get a new idea introduced, like this is this quarter's OKRs, you'll be able to hold it in your working memory, only bits and pieces of it, the four things, the objective and the three key results. And what happens by continually reminding people about them is it starts to reinforce the links between the neurons and you start moving it into long-term memory. And once it's long-term memory, then it's much easier to access. So when you have a high-level OKR and a second OKR and a third OKR, now we're not talking four things, right? We're talking 12 things. And now we add a team's OKR. Okay, now we've got, what, 16 things trying to hold in your memory. Oh, wait, and there's another level, another level. And at which point we've destroyed a lot of the value of the OKRs because people are like holding so much stuff in their head, they're confused. So there you have it. We only have a limited amount of working memory in our heads. So it's really important that we focus on the right thing. And we do not overload our teams with a bunch of stuff. As a matter of fact, go ahead and pick up Christina's book, Radical Focus. It's actually the best book on OKRs you will ever read. Highly recommend. How do you avoid that piece of hurry up and wait OKR. Make sure you plan one OKR with a team. Don't have it connected with folks. Just have one. Have the team work out and understand what they're doing. And then you can start to add more. Think of it like a gym. You want to make sure that you have the amount of weight that is appropriate for you. You don't want to have 240 pounds the first time and you just do up. That is what most teams do when it comes to OKRs. You just want to start simple. The second thing that stops teams is the fact that they are not empowered. There's no opportunity for failure with the team. And so they feel like they are forced to make things happen. If you cannot fail, you cannot choose. And if you cannot choose, giving them an objective that you, they know at the end of the day, you're going to tell them what to do in the first place means eventually they're going to realize they don't need to waste energy on believing there's an objective. They know the real objective is going to come later. 
and they have no say in the matter. So without being an empowered team, that isn't a team that is allowed to figure things out on their own and have agency on their work, then OKRs are going to be hurry up and wait OKRs just by definition. And the way you avoid this is by having empowered teams. You got to figure out methodologies where you're going to trust your team to operate. If there are things that have to be done, state them very clearly. Marty Kagan talks about high integrity commitments. That's one way of going about it. The reason why that works for me and to call them high integrity commitments is it puts the work where it needs to be. We have to go do this. And we need to start tearing out our time separate from whatever else that we're doing in order to accomplish this high integrity commitment. Just the words helps us get to where we need to be. It also allows us to escape the flip-flopping that comes with telling teams, hey, you need to do this, but we need to do that. It helps us figure out choice. The third thing is healthy operations around OKRs. OKRs aren't just something that you simply put a number and an objective to. You have to make it a part of the team's process. The easiest way to do that and the way that I find most effective is to add two things, two rituals to your team. One is a health check. How healthy do they feel about this objective? How healthy do they feel that they can accomplish that? That's going to help you as the person looking over the OKRs or the person working on the OKRs to get a sense of the confidence of the team. Going back to that empowered point, that gives you the opportunity to say, hey, I don't think we can accomplish this. Let's adjust. Super important when it comes to OKRs. Second thing are, is check-ins. Are you checking in? Simply adding the opportunity to go speak about the OKRs on a regular basis helps keep it top of mind. As Christina talked about before, we only have a limited amount of working memory. And so having that memory be refreshed by talking is a very powerful tool to get people focused on the things that matter. So you want to add a health check and then you want to add a check-in. That check-in can be as small as it 10 to 15 minutes during a sprint review, but it's important that it's there. So that's it. You want to avoid those hurry up and wait OKRs. You want to do three things. One, simplify. Make sure that you aren't overloading the teams with too many OKRs, too many objectives, too many key results. Two, you want to make sure that the team is empowered. Can they make decisions? If they can't, this is the wrong tool for you. And three, you want to have a check-in and you want to have a health check. This is going to help teams stay on task. So when you combine all three of those things, you have the ability to really help teams stay on track. You're going to turn those OKRs into action. All right, and so that's it. If you want to see more on product management and strategy stuff, go ahead and click one of these buttons somewhere up here uh, where you're going to find some more videos. I have shorts. I try to get a short out every day. Come on by, hang out, tell me what you think in the comments, and yeah, I'll catch you later.